Good morning. What is it dangerous not to know? Today we're looking at Mark 12, verses 18 to 27. Then some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him, and they asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. And there were seven brothers. The first took a wife, and dying, she left no offspring. And the second took her, and he died, nor did she leave any offspring. And the third likewise. So the seven had her and left no offspring. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had her as wife. Jesus answered and said to them, Are you not therefore mistaken, because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But concerning the dead that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the burning book passage, how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly mistaken. Now the Sadducees think they've got a question that Jesus can't answer. One woman, married seven times, no children, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? Jesus' answer is, number one, you don't know the scriptures or the power of God. Number two, there is no marrying in heaven. And number three, to remind them that he's the God of the living. Jesus just circular files their little trick. It's over. So, so what is there here for us? Well, first of all, don't try to outsmart the designer of marriage. Uh, God designed that. Don't, don't try to win an argument with him about it. He knew what he was doing. Second, the Bible teaching is not an antiseptic abstraction. It is, it, his words are life. They give us the way to live. This isn't something disconnected and abstract and far away and theoretical. Uh, this is the guide to life. It shows us how to live. We might tend to think of the word authority in kind of an abstract legal sense, but it's better to think of the word authority more like the word to, to create, to paint. He's the great painter, but he paints in, in real stuff. And this is what's so dangerous not to know because he is the giver of life. His word gives life. You know, instead of trying to outsmart God, what we should do is accept his word and make sure we're on the list so that we can go on and, and be on the other side and see what happens after you're resurrected. And we'll figure out what's going on at that time, and we'll see the beautiful things that God has in store for us. We're wasting too much time trying to outsmart God. That's a waste. Jesus shows the way. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your words of life. Thank you for this, uh, exactly what we need in a culture of death, the words of life. Uh, help us to frame our life based on this word you've given to us. Thank you for your mercies in revealing to us who you are, who we are, and how we can live the way we should be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As Christians, we worship the God of the living. Never forget it. God be with you today.